Axe is great. Mangachu is a good addition. And now Evs and Paintbrush are looking good too. They're looking, yeah. they're looking improved. So I think you know their most glaring weakness has been shored up. I mean, I would say overall, you talk about Mayhem now versus last season. Yes, you've had Mangachu, who's a very, very good addition to the team, but also just Mayhem Academy, they haven't been fighting the meta nearly as much. I mean, yes, they'll go off the beaten path here and there, but overall, they're a lot more willing to run 3-3 when necessary. Definitely. They're definitely a lot more adapted to the meta. Uh, they're looking a lot better. And you see Mayhem actually starting out with an interesting comp with the bunker composition here on first of Horizon on our assault map, our first assault map of the series, our only assault map of the series, with Mangachu on the Bastion and Shax on Sombra. And this is going to force some changes from Uprising where they don't like what they see. They realize that, you know what, maybe we don't want to be diving into a Bastion repeatedly, at no. least with what we were running. Instead, yeah, we're going to yeah. be diving in with Dive. There it is. We, we said it was an April Fool's joke, but that is a tra And Asking's back in, by the way. That's a Tracer Genji. Yes. We thought you guys, you thought, we thought you were getting pranked when I said they were back, but you actually weren't <laughs> getting pranked. They are here. The prank was that we didn't realize we were we getting pranked. Didn't know. We were the ones getting pranked all along. We've been pranked here. And, and right now, Mayhem are going to be playing a lot. You see when you're playing the Ana Brigida, saving the armor pack for the dive, saving the nade for the dive, and, and Shax is going to look for those hacks, especially on Punk, if possible. So, for now, Mayhem Academy is sitting pretty. It's up to Uprising to make the right move here. Mayhem Academy, they're running an anchor tank setup. They're just going to be sitting back. It's right now, it's just Uprising slowly but surely, setting up their dive. They're pressing towards the point. Going to try to make Mayhem rotate, get, make someone drop, and then set up the dive. And for now, they haven't really taken a whole lot of poke well, damage. Shax is able to find Klaus. And now it's Mangachu just getting good cleanup on the other side. Going to be annihilating Hypnot again. It kind of froze on our head, but we know the story we know what's of what happened. happened. To Hypnot. Yeah. Despite uh, our frozen uh, screen, we know uh, that Hypnot is gone. It actually froze at the perfect moment to see the Bastion turret just rotating over into Hypnot. And it's like, yeah, we know where this and is going to go. And look at Punk. He's getting staggered here as well. There's a sleep. The pool going to be trying to move back from main. They won't let him get out. Mangachu going to get that. The left click. And, and something to note, that, which is really impressive, Shax already has EMP. That's a pretty fast EMP for the defense here when you're trying to play counter dive Sombra in a way. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I would say that most NA Sombras do not build up EMP quite as quick as what we've seen in tournaments like Korean Contenders where Doha was able to get an EMP every other fight. But this is quick. This is very, very quick. I'm probably going to be trying to catch them. I mean, if he tries to catch them with the entry, I don't know how Mayhem will follow up, but he doesn't need to because Manitin and Shaq combine to pick up Klaus, who's extremely low. Dino goes down as well, so he doesn't have to invest it. I think it's going to be a counter dive ult, though, for Shaq. Also, I got to tell you, time flies when you're having fun. We're already down to a final minute 30 here. Mayhem has bought a lot of time in this dive. GT setup coming in from Uprising has not been very effective No, so it far. is not. And sometimes I think they need to be, you know, they have to make a choice because they send Asking to point. Shaq's going to have to fight him. But you see, Asking, he's caught. He's caught in. He's going to try to run out. He'll probably be picked up. No, he manages to get out. Very, very low, though. And you take a look at Uprising. Oh, no, oh, yeah, Asking gets picked off. And this does not look like a team that knows how to run a good GT dive. This looks like a team that knows that they should be running this here but they have not practiced it in a very long time. I mean, there's also a team that, you know, just doesn't know how, it, it, you're just lost. It looks like they're lost continuously. Shaxx is winning 2v1, the DPS. Uh, meanwhile, Mam Academy, all they're doing is holding back, getting good poke damage from the Bastion, good harass from Shax, and Uprising has never been in a spot where they've forced them to even use the EMP. Now they're down to the final 30 seconds, and even if we assume they get out of this fight in time, that means that they have one final fight directly into Shaxx's EMP. And here's the worst part. Dino committed amp. He committed the nano boost there while Klaus still has Blade. <laughs> so they've used nano boost and they don't have beat yet so they could beat Blade in. And Mayhem still has just about every ult, including the most important one, EMP on the books. And Uprising has to get at least a tick here. No matter what, they've lost the series. That is what is at stake. So this fight has to be at least a little bit successful. But already Dino down, Klaus gonna blade. 150 HP and a dream going to the side. Oh no. And gets Brigitte to the face. Oh no, ZP. Well this this should be cleanup now for Mayhem. There comes the Bastion ult as well. Punk, he's trying to deny. He should get d mech very soon. Manton still has bomb. There is some cleanup on the point, but there's just too much for Mayhem Academy. That blade yeah. just had no value. Got EMP'd for good measure, so no dashes or reflex. Bye bye. There's a reason why the combo has been around long enough to be called Nanoblade, where you, you tend to almost call it at times more by Nanoblade than Dragon Blade. That's because getting value out of a Dragon Blade without an Ana backing it up 
is really hard. So going back to what you pointed out in the middle of the game, we're just like, but wait, they won't have nano boost for the Dragon Blade. That was a really bad situation for Uprising to be in. And now, of course, what's even worse for them is that Mayhem Academy, they've taken the series. Yeah, it's, it's over. The series is done. I mean, now they're playing for map score. And the worst part for Uprising is they desperately need map score, especially with this loss. They're going to be so close to both Chicken Contendies and Montreal, which is the match following this one. And, and they're fighting for their life in playoffs. And so map yeah. score is actually hugely important right now. It, it, they definitely don't want to be losing those maps. And, and something to note, you know, when we talked about that Nano Boost and not having it for that fight for the Blade, the real question is, where did Dino's Nano Boost go, considering there are no defensive bolts on the field for Mayhem during that lineup? They were running Paintbrush on Brigida, and they were having Eps on Ana, so there's no Trance, there's no Beat, right? No. So, so when you invest the Nano Boost generally before Blade, you're trying to get his portals out, right? But they didn't get either out. There was no defensive bolt to begin with. So what was the reason at all behind it? it honestly, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I'm not even sure if you were to have an interview with Uprising after, if they could tell you exactly what was going on there. Because again, Mayhem Academy played a very good anchor setup and how they made it work. And I mean, for a team that's comfortable with silly heroes, it makes sense. Uprising, again, it just kind of felt like, well, I feel like this is what we should work here, but it was definitely not something that Uprising has heavily practiced. And now, of course, they're in a tough position where not only have they lost the series, but very likely to lose the map as well. And this is really where, you know, Mayhem Academy just want to close it out. I mean, they've won the series, so they're fine. They're locked in the playoff 100%. Um, it, but they definitely still want to have good map score. You see now Mayhem going to be running uh, the Tracer Sombra setup, which I actually like a little bit more than the Genji setup for the straight up dive because you can pressure the point a lot more heavily. You can take those 2v2 fights and force a lot more dropping for Uprising, you know, a lot more point presence for Uprising. So that's what they're going to be doing. They're going to send Shaxx and Megachu to really contest the point and, and allow their front line to come forward. Meanwhile, Shax just holding back here. Uprising going to need to delay this for... Over three minutes here. They're waiting quite a long time. They, to they, they are. They, they're waiting a surprising long period of time, I guess, for Mayhem Academy. They just realize, okay, we have quite a bit of time to work with. Fact. Just double Where count. But by, by the way, point. <laughs> uh, point pressure getting to a really rough spot. And Punk got DMX, got finished off by Shax. And Shax, on a crazy run now in the back, has done serious damage to Tracer. Looking for Dino. Gets him off the blink melee. And it's going to be Mayhem Academy off this Tracer pressure, finishing out the map. Three to nothing. And of course, as mentioned, it was a series even before the take here, but why not end it on a clean three to nothing note? And that was a perfect setup there. You see now why they took so long, because they were waiting for the tanks to get into position. They wanted to dive the front line in, have Fact, have Banneton on top of Uprising while Mangachu and Shaxx are on the point. Yeah. And if anyone falls, they can clean up the frags. But more importantly, having that double cap where you only need a tick, forces Uprising to turn their attention away from the tanks and fight the point. So yeah. it was a really, really well set up dive. It's also a really tough situation to be in where you have to defend just 33% where you don't get a normal defense where if you take a look at normal point A defenses, you use progress on the point as currency. And there's plenty of situations where you're fine giving up 33 or even 66 or 66% 66 if you can roll back in, win the fight, and have good alt economy going forward. But that wasn't the case here. They had to defend at 33%, and it is easier said than done, especially for the very first fight. Yeah, that was a you know, just clean dive hmm. off of a not clean defense, um, so or off of a very clean defense, I should say. Yeah. So that you know, Mayhem, they've taken the series 3-0, so they're in a good spot. They have the win. They have the map score. Uprising really want this last map. They yes. really do. This is the time where it's when we're this close in the standings, and now everyone's e currently equal in terms of their wins and losses, obviously before the next game. Uh, you know, map scores is the only thing dif differentiating them. So they yeah. really want to pick up Gibraltar. And bear in mind, too, in terms of the two teams here, Mam Academy, you know, look, as far as everything we've heard personally from fact, uh, they have a pretty good team house environment. They have to be chilling at this point where they're feeling super good about the rest of the series, no matter how it ends up. Uprising, they're the team right now that's freaking out over where this has gone. Yeah, they need to bring it back. Need to desperately try to get that map score somehow. Moving into Gibraltar. Going to be our escort. Closing out the series here. Because no matter what, I mean, this is the end of the series. It's the last map. Hmm. So it's Uprising looking to hit this map win. Or, or Mayhem looking to get a clean 4-0. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for Mayhem, you still finish this out strong, obviously. I mean, not that they'd have any other plan otherwise. But 
Also, this is Gibraltar. This is where you can mess around in terms of different strategies you'd like to employ. Or, on the same note, you just practice your 3-3. Leave that in your pocket for later on. Meanwhile, for Uprising, this is where you still pull out all the stops where, yes, the series might be gone, but you were in such a close deadlock in that 5-6-7 position that you need everything you can get. And they don't have an e necessarily a super easy schedule as the weeks go, as the last two weeks are are approaching, are happening. So they definitely need this map score. See, Mayhem Academy going to be playing quad tank actually with Epps on the Mora, holding close, going to be rushing out from the stairs, stopping this early cart front. We have gone full EU is where we've gone here. This of course was a special of EU contenders last year. Fell out of favor as goats became a thing and Brigida became the new hotness, but. Mayhem Academy is just going to be hiding here in the back and buying quite a bit of time as Uprising looks at goes, how do we break through? And, and you know, they're not putting that much point, that much shield presence onto Fact either. Fact Vision just sitting on the cart, Manta now doing the rotation, but really just not enough shield presence. Manta's demec early though, that should be all they need with this double hit scan setup for Uprising. With no Diva mech, that's a, pretty much a fight. Now, the one downside about running quad tank here for Mayhem Academy is that, yes, you've bought a good minute here by the time you've been cleaned up. That's also four big bodies to build ult charge off of, and Uprising took well advantage. Take a look at how well charged they are yeah, their for the next are fight. Great. Their ults are really good right now. They have like pretty much everything they need to win the next fight. It, this is gonna be based off how fast Mayhem can take the next fight, and they can burn any ults, because they do. there's a lot of time for the cart to go. Only one currently on cart for Uprising Academy. So they need to stop the cart early, build up some more ults, and get some ults out of Uprising. Which I mean, they do. It looks I, like they're getting the early contest. I feel like for Mayhem, one of your best win conditions here is just the idea that, hey, Roadhog hasn't played a whole lot. Catch someone off guard, get an early hook pick off, go from there. Instead, they're going to be fighting Car Wash, being very tanky, and going for a strategy that in the end is very focused on buying time. And there the Bob is out, along with Hypnot's Primal. Going to pretty much move Shax into position. They're going to pick off Shax. Mangaju should be the next to die. You see he's isolated by Punk. But still fighting here for Mayhem. So, Mayhem going to be losing the fight fairly decisively, Uprising. Not really having to invest a whole lot. They did use the Valkyrie there. Okay, Dino gets picked off. Uh, that was more than what Epps should have been able to get there. They'll get the res though, but I think more importantly, they got Valkyrie, they got Walls, they got Primal, they got Bob. So, really, Mayhem's coming back in here with almost four ults, and the, probably the only fight winner on the field is Punk with the Diva Bomb. Yeah, and I mean, remember, the goal here, of course, is a first point hold. They've bought a lot of time. Now they're entering into a fight that they very well could have the advantage on. Fat gonna drop the hammer, and they're just looking for Hypnot. The only person getting knocked down by the Shatter. Not quite there in time before Dino heals them all back up, but it forces the Transcendence, and it's still a pretty good Shatter from Fact. Forcing the Trance, and now Shax, they're gonna have grab very, very soon. Bombs out, doesn't catch anyone. Bomb the other way, gets it. Mega oh. Tune. oh no! Bob! does it again. Bob did it. He not only did it, but that was a great bomb as well from Punk to zone them off the point. But I think that is our first Bob cap. Yeah. Was that a Bob cap or was that a Punk cap? I no, think it was a Bob I, cap. I think it was a Bob cap. I, I think that was Bob pushing it over. Yeah, it where, was definitely Bob. Uh, don't forget, I, Ash has not been around long enough in terms of active play for teams to 100% realize the threat that Bob could just come in and cap the point at any time. And Mayhem are choosing, strangely enough, to not only stay on this comp, but then move back to the Winston, which is, I mean, it makes sense in terms of verticality, but how do you heal him? You're stuck on Moira. It's an interesting choice for Mayhem, where again, they feel, seemingly they're playing the overall time bank more than anything else, but Colossus gonna be burning down Dino immediately. Paintbrush out of the fight, five on five. Mayhem Academy fighting here on the point. Graviton in from Shax. Hypnot out of the fight as a result, so they just grab Hypnot entirely, but it works out for Mayhem Academy. They're buying time and uprising getting forced back. I mean, getting Dino early there ensured that the, the fight win. It ensured the fight win because there is no Discord up there to burn down all those tanks. And so without that Discord, there is no way that Uprising, and also the healing from Dino, there's no way that Uprising could have sustained in that fight. So the quad tank, oh, Shax just gets annihilated. Headshot boosted, moving on in. That'll end Dendi's Zarya's life, wherever they stand. And now, in fact, he's stuck in the back line, trying to contest. You see him turning, trying to get rid of that head hitbox. Primal's out for Hypnot. Getting one frag, pushing them towards point. F will go down very soon. This will be the cap for Uprising. And again, for Uprising, they're going to be getting through point B reasonably soon here. Mam Academy, though, even though most of this game has been tilted against them, 
they've lost reasonably well. They, they've bought good amounts of time yeah, they, here. They bought good time, especially as it's a widow like asking with that with that damage boost. And asking is a really dangerous widow. Very very talented. You still get that opening pick onto Shaxx very early. Mayhem now making their own swaps though, going to the Mercy's in, getting the Hanzo widow rather than the uh, the Ash widow. The double sniper is back. And let me tell you, in case you've forgotten, Mangachu is an absolutely deadly Hanzo. Really, really good Hanzo. I mean, he's an overall just fantastic projectile player. Shaq gets that early frag, gets Swimmer and Asking. Yeah, and Bob just caught out. Bye-bye, Bob. Yeah, you know, his team told him to go in. He did what as it was told, and he was just simply shot down in the middle of the street. But Klaus, able to get the counter pick off here, Uprising, so with a little bit of life in him. Asking's gonna be back soon. Pressure coming in from the double hit scan of the Uprising. And Mayhem gonna have to give up a little bit of room as that self-destruct rolls in and gets up! And also there's gonna be Hypnot following up, getting a paintbrush. Asking gonna take Mangachu down. I mean, this is this is gonna be cap, or not cap, but this is gonna be a lot of point presence here for Uprising. Uprising getting a lot of pressure and then some two minutes and 23 seconds left. Mayhem Academy backs against the wall. They would really want to lay this a little bit more. This would be a very quick time for the Uprising in the very end. In fact, going to be bursting out of the doors here. Primal Rage used, and even though it's been used, he is getting chunked down, taken out. Rage or no, wasn't enough to keep him in the fight. Mam Academy again, just looking for a little bit more delay. Self-destruct to the back from Manditon, not going to connect. In fact, back into the fight, and again, Uprising working with all the advantage here. Just Mayhem delaying, transcend out, but Leapin gets Klaus oh with Shax. They an, might be able to turn it. That's incredible. That is an incredible recontest. We see Manitin throw out the bomb after Fax's death. Manages to remake. Hypnot isn't able to get him in time. Wall Paintbrush sits in the open versus Double Sniper. Doesn't get picked and Rez's fact, allowing Eps to have that transcendence and recontest. Yeah, I mean, I think the key phrase there is Rez's fact, where, again, you want to talk about something that teams are not as good at punishing as they used to be Mercy Resurrections. <laughs> Where I, I don't know if Painbrush should have been able to get away with that one, but it did work out. It, it did work out, especially while Fact was dead. So there is no zoning bubble, there was no zoning presence, and Manitin was remecking. There was no tanks providing front line for that res for Paintbrush. Well, Shaxx right now providing a good deal of counter widow pressure here, and Uprising, they feel like they're not going to have the presence they need to finish this one out without a swap, and they're going to be going over the 3 3. Meanwhile, Man Academy more than willing to oblige. 3 3. 3-3. Which is the right play from Uprising. They're not winning the double cyber duel right now. They're not winning the time bank duel. They need to make the swap on a 3-3. However, Mayhem, who's looked overall more comfortable on it, is going to make a swap of their own. So both teams getting into it. Final minute. Mayhem Academy, they've gotten beaten up a good amount in this game, but they've also bought a lot of time. Shield going to be out here. Facts going in even deeper as a result. Dino gets picked off. Manitin somehow able to catch him. And it's Diva in the backfield. Manitin doing way more work than you'd expect. An uprising. Gonna be down to their final 30 seconds. He can't keep giving away with it, ZP. No. He can't keep getting away with the Assassin Diva in 3 3. Oh. It simply should not be possible. Swimmer goes for an extremely, you know, I think, risky wait, play wait. there. Swimmer Swim didn't fall into the pit. No, yeah, he, he, he got he, out. He, he, he looped around. He looped all the way around, but I mean, that's definitely not like a huge deal. More, I just really, Manton should not be able to get those picks in the back line. It just shouldn't be possible. No, and I mean, again, it's Uprising not taking care of business and actually denying Manton, but here we go. Final fight on the way. Uprising, they do need to touch. They get there just in the time. They have to transcend as payment to cross the toll bridge. Transcendence gonna be out here from Am Academy. They're biding their time. Graviton in. Hypnot though, down. It was Fact Shatter setting the stage. Pumps bomb though, off the other side. It's all even, four on four. But Manitin again in the back, finding Asking. DPS, Diva working in play here from AM Academy. Respawn's gonna be in their edge. And this payload now very likely to stop right here. And that's definitely gonna be it stopped. It, the fight was already a little over despite Punk's bomb. There was no ults, no sustain up alive for Uprising post grab. The Shatter from Fact denying that cleanup and also guaranteeing two frags. So very good defense from Mayhem. Unconventional is what I would say. I would say an extremely unconventional defense but a very good defense. Well, again, I think it just comes down to what are you trying to accomplish here, and I can't help but think the way that Mayhem Academy was playing it from the very beginning. You take a look back at point A, all the way to B and C, until they finally swapped, is that they were not running quad tank as a, we expect to dominate these fights. It's more so, we are running this composition because it's going to be really annoying for you to remove us from the payload in any sort of reasonable time, and even if we lose every fight, we're going to be buying a lot of time off the clock. It's still a risky play, though, because not only do you have to play that composition very well, it relies on the enemy team to not 
doing, not making the right plays in terms of moving you, in terms of getting rid of that barrier. And I think Uprising, you know, they had some issues removing Fax barrier, removing that contest. And, and while they have a much better, you know, much better focus bar on there, the, the time would have been probably a lot faster. I, I think it would have, and I mean, I don't think Mayhem Academy necessarily sold me that this is the great defensive strategy of the future for them. But within the context of this map, they made it work well enough that all they need to do is finish out the map, and that'll be the series. That will well, be I mean, the it's already the series, already but that'll be the, the map. Well, that will be the that'll be a clean yeah. map. That'll be the four zero. It'll be the four zero. As it looks like mayhem. Oh my! This this I this I'm sniffing it out. This reeks of Mangachu if they stay on on Bastion. If they stay <laughs> on Bastion this entire time, uh, this reeks of a Mangachu play if I've ever seen one. Yeah, uh, this is the classic. Guys, guys, we've had a good series so far. Look, Shaxx goes to Reinhardt too, by the way. That's the double barrier with the D.Va. This is a Mangachu play through and through. This is about as close as you get to the old school classic. Protect the president composition. How? And why does it keep happening, man? It's able to get on the asking. They get the early pickoff and now protect the president composition. It's back. It's unfortunate. I mean, they get the res on asking, which is uh, something for Uprising. But because they've rounded this initial bin, this comp only gets stronger after the bin. Protect the president. It's been a long time. Oh, Perhaps too long. Though. Yeah, they, they, now you're not going to be able to res Mangachu if you're actually able to take him down in the payload. So all shields are up there. A lot of faith here on Sebastian Mangachu. He rises to the challenge, grinding down Uprising as they try and remove him. And now he brings up the heavy artillery. The Abrams is in, the tank is out, and he's blowing everyone the kingdom come. And that's going to be the end, but it's really going to be the, the cap. And the problem is they got around the bin, they sacrificed Punk's mech to contest, and as soon as D.Va is out of the field, protect the president, is too strong. It is far too strong of a comp as soon as diva has gone. A blast from the past. I, I gotta tell you, this, uh, for those who are wondering, well, what's the history of this composition? It goes back to old C9. The C9 who did this in some of the early Overwatch tournaments now involved two Reinhardts, but the Orisa, a decent substitution. And look at this great presence for Mayhem to control the high ground here as well. They're gonna invest the bongos from Orisa, give that damage boost. Mayhem setting up, trying to find any frags. Oh, and he's finding them, just removes Brigida from this reality. Klaus never saw it coming. He's into the Negaverse before uh, he would hit him. And look how low Hypnot is. He can't pressure the front line right now. However, Shax did trade his life trying to chase those frags. The Valkyrie's out, and it should be Uprising now taking control here, unless oh. Mangju makes some true hero plays. No, he's just going to use the tank and move on in. This is probably a suicide attack if there ever was one. Not something that I think Bayam Academy is really expecting to win, even though they invested the Valkyrie. But the reason why they used the Valkyrie here all of this is changing. They're done with the setup. And, I mean, Shax comes back, though, drops the Shatter, picks up Dino, and forces the Trance. So, real, really, that was probably the best possible play for the recontest, he because built, now the Trance is gone. He built 74% to he another did. Shatter. How does he do it? But they're going to be making the swaps now. They won't be staying on here. There's no way. Yeah, that, that, that's why you wonder, like, well, why, why did he go back in? Why did they use Valkyrie? Because they were done. They yeah, were done. As soon as you lose that first fight and you can't stabilize, the, it, it's over. Shaq's forcing the trance in that hero play, though. I mean, that's pro that's great, though. Forcing yeah. the trance is fantastic. Uh, we'll never see the other shower that could have been, but of course, it makes sense. You put back back over to the other side. You prioritize hero expertise. But here we go, Graviton. Bomb set up from Uprising here on point B. They move in for it. They don't quite get the finish they're looking for, but they're still likely going to get enough to keep Mayhem back for a little while. I think Mayhem actually can enter oh. there because they traded main tanks, which is a much worse position for Uprising, considering True. look how high energy Shax is in comparison to Asuki. Shax super low. The pickoff on to him doesn't happen. Instead, going to get healed back up. And you're right, Mayhem Academy, they've turned this to their favor. And it's going to be a much rougher re-engage here for Uprising, where they'll probably have to use Primal very early. They, they will. They're definitely going to have to use the Primal, even probably invest the Rally here, since they get you so close to his own. Hit on engaging, Punk trying to get a contest. Punk about to get burned. Heavy burn, moving on in. Hipnot did have to primal very early into this fight, looking for the disruption. Fact game booped and bopped around, taken out early. Uprising still with an advantage here, and Hipnot's disruption, it's enough. Yeah, that, that disruption from Hipnot doing a lot of work, getting Fact into the majority of Uprising, setting up the grab for asking. Uh, but if you're Mayhem, you're relatively happy with that engagement, considering you're coming on both support ults, and you're gonna have combo very soon. You can just rush the cart if you want, especially Hypnot's not on Winston anymore. You don't have to go high ground if you don't want to, but you know, it is a safe bet. So I'm probably gonna do that final swap to a Reinhardt base 3-3 man, working on a grav bomb setup. Two minutes and 20 seconds left for them to get through point B. Lots of time, gonna be deciding to go here from the left side. 
the drop to cart as they move in here through the choke. Asking is okay. okay that, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense because asking was clearly not not yeah. in the game as he was <laughs> sitting there shooting the ceiling. You don't know what was on that ceiling. He was trying to break through to a higher plane of reality. Is what was going on there. Well, he's looking for a higher plane of ma of wins. That's what <laughs> rising should be looking for. Well, right now, uh, n no evidence at the found either, but. Uh, Taking a look, this has been a better map, I would argue, for Uprising so far, even though to a degree it's been because Mayhem has been... They've played a little, a little silly. Yeah. I think a little silly. When I see plays like this come out and Mangachu's on the team, and uh, you know, you form, you can know, you can feel axiomatically that is Mangachu creating these comp... Built around Mangachu, <laughs> Mangachu is creating these compositions. He's saying, guys, let's let's play a little silly. You, I hear him laughing. I hear I hear his laugh in my head right now. You, you know his laugh. Uh, you, you could pick it out of a crowd. You, I could pick. Uh, you could pick him out of a crowd too, because he's very tall. He is. So uh, I I know that is a cl clear Mangachu play so far here on Gibraltar. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I look at their defense, and this is a, you know, a very backhanded phrase where it's almost. Uh, I, I don't know how to describe, it, but sort of. I don't hate their defense, but on the same note, it wasn't a dominant standard defense either it kind of did its work but could they have done better with something more oh, traditional yes. the answer is probably yes we we learned a long time ago overwatch in general learned a long time ago when that swap was made from like quad tank to the triple dps or just the dive <laughs> that you couldn't play static composition especially on gibraltar no. versus very mobile comps it was something it's a lesson that's been learned for a long long time if anything if teams that are going to do it are only doing it for two reasons either they don't feel confident Hmm. In mirroring like a, do in a the, the double sniper or the dive setup, which I don't think Mayhem Academy <laughs> is. I think they are com they are confident they probably could, um, but rather you know you're just looking to buy time in a ni in a very niche setup, while also having a little fun almost. Yeah. And, and that's really when I look at the quad tank, it's like yes, is it a real strategy? Is it the strategy you come up with if you really want to have a great defense? Probably not. I mean, one thing that's worth noting is that as far as everything we've heard, the Mayhem Academy team does have a pretty good team culture where, where as we fill time here and we wait, this is where you can go in the story time where last contender season, I spent some time uh, rooming with uh, Fact and Avast as uh, we were doing our show days from Blizzard Arena. And one thing we noticed is that we'd get back from casting a Mayhem Academy game. Fact wouldn't be there. Fact would be at the Mayhem place for a very long period of time. And I got to tell you, you're not sitting there at your team house environment for ages after the fact where they were done with the team activities for the day unless everyone is actually enjoying themselves and having a good time. So everything we've heard from the Mayhem Academy is that they do have pretty good team chemistry. So the idea that going into a final map here, they go, you know what, guys? We've won the series. We're in a good spot. Let's have some fun with it. Not too crazy. To be fair, are you also getting the most value out of your Uber there? Yeah. Because they did, he did have to go over there generally most of the time. So, you know, you want to maximize the amount of time that you got out of the travel. But they do. I've heard they mm -hmm. have a relatively, you know, good team environment there. But I think um, Mayhem overall, the, you know, we, the series is over, right? Yeah. We, we can, we've can we already made that conclusion. It's map score that's playing for right now. Uh, and, and Mayhem have looked great. A in fact, not only have they looked great, but they've played some unconventional setups and still looked extremely dominant. Now, if that more that might be more of a tell, I think at this point of the state of Uprising Academy right now. <laughs> um, you know, earlier on the season, I you know they seemed pretty strong, but they just didn't improve. No. They didn't seem to improve. You know, we, we, we talked about we liked how Klaus looked comparatively last season. We have liked that Klaus. Looked. I I also like how Hypnot, even though he's a new addition, I do like individually how he looks. But it's clear as a team, they haven't improved. No, comparatively to a lot of those other teams in their group. And they haven't made those same steps necessary in terms of initiative, in terms of under, you know, understanding their setups, in terms of counter comping. The, the funny thing about Uprising, though, is that their general theme for their contender setup is that, again, they haven't done a great job of actually winning the tournament, so to speak. But that's not your goal as a contender's organization. I mean, it's kind of a nice bonus. It helps in marketing your players. But this org in general has done a very good job of just getting their players to Overwatch yeah. League to begin with. So... Even in setups like this, where we've seen that it's definitely been a bit of a struggle for them here, especially after losing players, I've still had some pretty decent individual performances. So, end of the day, Uprising could still move players in the Overwatch League, even in the season that hasn't been super great for them. So, you know, I kind of feel like they're... Well, yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, you, that's, that's on the comparison. Well, you know, we saw <laughs> Uprising, they didn't look great previous. They, you know, they were a playoff team still. Yeah. If you're not a playoff caliber team, and then you're making your way. True. You have to have a very, from contenders, from NA contenders at that, you have to be, you know, thinking 
about, you know, how strong individually are these players really, right? And when I'm looking at Uprising and comparing them to, you know, like, if, if I'm going to look at, like, players on Fusion Uni or players on, you know, or even on Mayhem Academy right now, no. and I'm looking at them as, like, well, they're not playoff caliber, and I've seen great stuff from all of them, so why would I pick this person, right? True. Why, I mean, why, why? So it, it, it's a fine balance you walk, right? Because you hear some people in organizations say, like, well, win, you know, winning all the time is initially my goal because they're just developing players. But it's like, well, how do you know how developed your <laughs> player is if you don't win? Yeah. No, there's definitely sort of a line there where – I, I think I agree that you have to at least be in the playoff conversation. You can't go, we're building great players, and then, you know, have so many changes that even with good players, you end up, you know, facing relegation. That's probably not going to be super convincing. So Uprise is definitely a little bit off their mark here, even though, again, they, they have gone through quite a few changes over the course of the season. Meanwhile, though, on the other end of the spectrum, Mam Academy, you know, talk about them throughout the course of the season here. Forget just the series. Easily one of the most improved teams, and... The interesting thing is, I feel like they had this potential last season as well. It's just they've sort of buttoned down a little bit here. I right? mean, they Where, chose to play 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Realistically, I, I think that's what it comes down to. Is I, I think making choose a great addition, but mm. uh, you know, going from the get-go to choose to play 3-3 three, three and learn what is the strongest composition that you will be playing the majority of the time other teams will be playing improves your success a lot. It, it makes you a lot more dynamic. You know, we've mm. seen it even in Overwatch League with, with Chengdu. Where, sure, great, they're... You know, the triple DPS with the Hammond composition is probably the best in the league as of right now for the data we have, right? <laughs> but that's not going to win you the majority of your maps. So they've, they, even them, have had to swap onto the 3 3, swap onto those meta compositions. I, I really do love that. Is that you're the best non 3 3 team in Overwatch League? What does that win you? Not the playoffs. I mean, you can beat like two teams maybe as we're back in the game. Uh. Asking is back. It was clear as a DC from him. Uprising still holding the high ground mayhem. Gonna be moving here from the low ground. They do have an overall ult advantage here, so should be a good position for them. Let's get this cap. So Mayhem Academy, gonna move forward. Shax holding onto the grab, gonna connect with it. To start things out here. Manitin, the bomb being threaded here on top of the payload. Nice boop to set it on up. Well timed across the board. Mayhem Academy gonna be getting point B off that one. And this will be the point B cap for Mayhem. Investing uh, three ults there. That's fine, though. Getting the second. They're going to have plenty of time for last. See if they can catch any spawns. I doubt they will. They should be jumping off the map if you're uprising. It's like Mayhem goes for it. goes, hey, is anyone still around? It's like, nope, we're jumping into the water. Thank you very much. And, and the good thing for uprising here is they do have uh, at least two fights, as long as they take this next fight very fast. Uh, maybe they could burn ults out of Mayhem Academy, burn up their own, and, and they'll be in a good position for that final fight. So Mayhem Academy, of course, looking for the 4-0 Uprising. Desperately trying to get at least one map win on the board because it could decide their season. Him not getting super displaced. Sets up back for the Shatter. But the barrier there, just in the nick of time. Swimmer able to drop that. Keep Uprising in a good spot. It is very good for Uprising that Swimmer was not caught in that Shatter because that's likely a turning point for this fight. And not only that, it was a great counter Shatter from Hypnot. Both Swimmer and Hypnot making a huge hero play there. Swimmer having the great beat. Hypnot having that counter shatter that also allowed them to clean up Mangachu as he pops the rally. So they don't have the rally anymore. They don't have beat. They've traded shatters. So uh, that's really a full equalization right now for Uprising. The only thing they have to worry about is the grab for Shax. Mayhem Academy in a tough spot here in terms of alt economy. Not a whole lot of fights to turn this around. A minute 30 for Uprising as they look to hold on. At least add a little bit of map pressure to their score. A little bit all frozen up it for is. us here. We're watching here. Epps toss some toss an orb at his team, but we we realistically cannot see anything oh. as uh, apparently Epps has ended up into the into the sidelines and has been cleaned up. He teleported into the future. All cause was removed, but the effect was still there. Removed from reality. Minute ten left here for Mam Academy, but you know at least kudos here to Mam Academy for that. Epps did not transcend under pressure. No, and also they got the bomb out of Punk. So that, that's another ult gone. No combo on the field for Uprising Academy because the bomb is out, which means they, they only have to use the trance to survive as long as as long as Hypnot doesn't get a great you know pin shatter. And Academy moving on forward, asking, holding on to the grab for Uprising on the other side. Early shot from Hypnot gets nothing. No one affected at all from Am Academy. Back shield just taking the brunt of that one. Shield is under a bit of pressure here, down the 500. They're looking for the shield break. Fact under pressure, dropping the shatter. Gets nothing on the other side. Both Reinhardts whiffing one for another. Back shield is down. Fact under heavy pressure, has to rotate around. Manitin trying to buy a little bit of space. Self-destruct up, not gonna get a whole lot. Both teams into it. Transcends 
Now fading for Uprising. Mave Academy going in even further. Barrier invested. They're diving in deep. They're looking for Hypnot. He's going to fall. Dino under pressure. Backing out. Six on five now for Mayhem. And here comes the bomb from Punk from that... Uh, from the flank, I should say, from the rear. Doesn't get anything. Mayhem still in control of the point. A rising have to come back out. Swimmer so close to the beat for this recontest. Mangachu able to get on asking. Mayhem Academy now really sinking in. We're in overtime. Final fight, but uprising. Losing member after member. The barrier only gonna hit four. They're able to get shacks, but is that gonna be enough? They're desperately trying to buy time for their spawns. The rally, though, can be coming in from Mayhem Academy, making it more secure. Manitin, the big boom on the top, the boom on the bottom from the shatter. And that oh my should goodness. be enough. They didn't get Dino. No, Fact they didn't. Dino was dead, and he didn't get him. And now the trance is out, giving Uprising another chance to contest. I still think oh. it's going to be clean up. Mayhem should be able to win this fight. But that was close. That was a little bit scarier than it probably should have been for Mayhem Academy. But even in the end, as things are looking like Uprising might get a map on the board, Mayhem Academy, get it together for one good final fight. They finish out the series 4 to nothing, And that little bit of extra salt in the wound could very much come back to haunt Boston. I, it should. It should haunt Uprising here because no. they, they now are, you know, tied in terms of map wins and losses with the 6th and 7th seed, and their map score isn't much better. No. And the problem is the 6th the and 7th are about to play. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're about to play right now, like right this next match, Montreal versus uh, Chicken Contendies, and whoever wins that will likely be going above Boston in seed. Yeah, I mean, a key, key point here. When they're playing each well, other, one team is guaranteed to win. Yeah. There, there, there there must be a winner. Win. Yeah, there must be a winner. So they will be going <laughs> to the Boston and seed. And, and you know, depending on the map score for that, Boston could potentially even go below whoever loses. Yeah. So it is uh, they're very much balancing on knife's edge right now. Yeah, it is a do or die situation here for Uprise Academy. Mayhem Academy though, continuing on. Just unparalleled excellence so far here. A big bounce back for them in this contender season. And for right now, they're one of the favorites to potentially get to the Atlantic Showdown later on in the year. But guys, that's only match one that's done here. We still got three more matches here left to play here today. Please join us after the break. Get me getting into it.